Today on Behind the Mystery, Friedrich's ataxia, a progressive and debilitating neurological disorder. Patients can often experience at a young age difficulty walking, clumsiness, and impaired speech. We're going to sit down with neurologist Dr. Susan Perlman to learn more, but first, let's meet patient Frankie Perizzola. I began to notice symptoms when I was in my freshman year of college. I was struggling going up the stairs. I could just feel how much harder it was to put an effort into walking that was previously so easy. That's when it first started to hit me like something was going on. It was getting more and more difficult to bring the groceries up or even just going down in my car. Walking across the stage at our graduation, I was terrified. I was more worried about falling at my graduation than I was about actually graduating. The Balancing Act met with neurologist Dr. Susan Perlman of UCLA Medical Center who treats patients with Friedrich's ataxia. Friedrich's ataxia is a neurodegenerative genetic disorder with mutations in both copies of the FXN gene that makes frataxin protein. Frataxin protein is necessary for the production of energy in highly energy dependent parts of the body, which includes the brain, the nervous system, the heart. So brain cells, especially those that control coordination and balance are weakened and the heart muscle, which requires a constant supply of energy is also weakened. Upon graduating college, Frankie began to investigate her symptoms further. It was her godmother and godmother's husband, both in the medical field, that spurred her diagnostic journey. It was definitely noticeable that my gait was off. They gave me the reflex test and I had zero reflexes. And the way they looked at each other when that happened, I just got the feeling something was wrong. That's how I got introduced to a cardiologist and neurologist. The early symptoms are so generic. Um, mild clumsiness, not running as fast as the other kids in PE class, um, unexplained stumbles and falls. But when the symptoms have been present for you know, several months, um, usually the family, the school recognizes that there's something wrong being the most common cause of genetic ataxia in that age group. The concern about a neurologic problem is thought about either by the pediatrician or by a pediatric neurologist who may be called in to diagnose. Or if somebody presents with an atypical form, they're a little older than the average, um, or they present initially with scoliosis, or rarely they present with heart failure before the ataxia is recognized. I went to the neurologist first. He's the one that initially brought up the word ataxia. He referred me to getting an MRI and CT scan. Looking back on what I know now, I don't think my neurologist understood what I was describing as how he would understand. I was saying I was dizzy but really it was my gait and my vision that was being affected and that was causing me to feel the way I was feeling. So overall, I was maybe in a guessing period of three to four years. The clinical presentation with these key features, gait and limb ataxia, slowed or slurred speech, absence of lower limb reflexes, distal weakness in the hands and feet, dizziness, scoliosis, or other skeletal abnormalities. If they meet even half the criteria for classic Friedreichs, adult and pediatric neurologists will feel comfortable ordering the Friedreichs ataxia GAA expansion test, which looks for enlargement of that segment of the gene that then blocks the production of the frataxin protein. 
With neurologic problems that are expected to be progressive, early diagnosis, especially an early genetic diagnosis, you can begin to set out a, a health maintenance plan. For Frankie, it took four years of getting multiple opinions and meetings with various neurologists to finally have a genetic test to confirm her diagnosis. On my diagnosis day, I finally met with my neurologist and I had my mom next to me. They slid over a piece of paper with my test results and the first line said, Francesca Perizola has inherited Friedrich's ataxia. Um, it, I had been going through years and years of questioning myself and my body. Overall, I felt grateful that I finally received an answer. As Friedrich's ataxia progresses, there's an increased risk of scoliosis, heart failure, and arrhythmias, diabetes, difficulty swallowing, slurred speech, muscle atrophy, and more. Because of these serious consequences, patients should be diagnosed as early as possible to help optimally manage symptoms. The team is, is key. Regular visits with the neurologist, a general internist or an endocrinologist, cardiologist. The heart is the primary determinant of mortality. Our foundation of management does revolve around rehabilitation medicine. Physical therapy when appropriate occupational therapy, speech and swallowing therapy. We know that a regular exercise program, proper diet, um, and judicious use of whatever supplements the, the family would like to try can absolutely improve the, un the young person's quality of life. After I received my diagnosis, my mom and I drove home. Um, it was a very emotional drive. I had to relearn the approach I was gonna take in life. Four months after my diagnosis, I met Dr. Perlman. She not only was able to address every single question I had about my body and the way FA was going to affect me, but she also had every re resource that I needed. Um, one being FARA, or the Friedrichs Ataxia Research Alliance. I became an ambassador. They would send me out to different doctorate programs, genetic counseling programs, to speak to them and kind of put a face behind FA, as well as raising a little bit of awareness. When a patient has been diagnosed with a rare disease like Friedreich's ataxia. That relationship between the patient, the family, and the physician is key. They need to have an open dialogue. Being able to engage with Frankie and people like Frankie to keep them looking forward. You know, I was so impressed with her willingness to learn and to really face this problem head on. I've just learned that I need to listen to my body and that things are gonna be really hard and things are gonna be really challenging, but I got it. I can figure it out. For more information on many of the infographics you have seen here today and to find resources to help neurologists diagnose FA and patients to manage FA, visit connectfa.com. You can also visit our website, The Balancing Act, dot com.